Hey guys, I'm Michael Tren, Clark Bartren, and this is our arm workout. See, I want Mike to spot me just so he can put his wiener in my face. You do something for me just today. Yeah. So instead of cupping it, force the grip. Slow. No rush. Squeeze it. Uh, it's tingling. I know. Sure. I know it is. Go, go, go. Tang on is gone. Just doing little subtle changes like that, having somebody else coach you, direct you, give you guidance, like none of us are beyond that. And that's really what I want you to take away from this video. You know, I'm on a different bench than Mike. Mike's obviously a lot stronger than me. But the tips are still the same. It doesn't matter how much weight is being lifted necessarily. It's about the nuances in the... So I took from a false grip to a full grip, squeezing, slowing down, and, and just having somebody else there really changes the way you approach your workout because you get stuck in your ruts when you're doing it by yourself. So I said flare, and I know that a lot of people will bring it in. This is your isolation movement, close grips. This is your power. So let them come out a bit, don't force it in. Let it go to its natural position, which will flare out, unless you reverse, and reverse is just gonna shove them in. And that's why I like reverse so much, for isolation. Um, and yes, 405 is still isolation work. For me, that doesn't mean it has to be for you. And then Clark, the grabbing, the cracked, yeah, right? Everything but And so in your team, it's most likely the nerves coming down is causing tingling. Yes. So right at C6, that nerve root affects these fingers. Okay. So if you have tingling in these fingers, I know right there it's that nerve. It's huge. That's the exact pattern of ball. And then for me, I wanted him to grab the bar to fire now the nerves that are I guess okay. impinged at a moment Correct. to start yep. firing through. Correct. And so let's see if this, let's see if we're right. Yep. That's which is cool. We get to watch him do this. Wow. And then in 20 or 30 minutes, we get to come back and go, what's going on? Who's that? Yeah. This. See that? Nice angle. Don't over exaggerate that. Ooh, and that grip was close. His grip, almost inside here, where I'm gonna do a power, so I'm gonna come out. This would be your extreme power, moderate, over isolation. Or just extremely handsome grip. Yeah, yeah. So I'm choosing to go nice and slow and good tempo here today because I don't really wanna lift heavy, heavy. I just wanna, really increase the time of tension. So there's so many ways that you can vary the lift. You know, they're obviously going heavier over there, but Mike can go heavy and do this sort of tempo too. So I want you to see his set with a much heavier weight, but the bottom line is I look better. So. <laughs> Single reps. Like what? To warm up, yeah. Okay. Really and fast. then what? Well, so explain to the people. So I need to wake up the body and the nervous system more importantly than the muscle. Uh, the muscle is going to be a byproduct of getting warmed up because of the nervous system. But if I can get the nervous system warmed up with a good amount of weight, that's Wolf's Law, Davis' Law, where it's the connective tissue. And that's, I focus on the connective tissue. The, the, the muscles and all that will come. Um, but it's the connective tissue I need to stay healthy. And that's what, like, you see that healthy body that the shoulders haven't dropped down and they're still carrying that physique. So, which is odd, odd that we had to crack his neck today to get those nerves going. And again, he and I are almost 60. And so, that being said, it, the reason we can do it today is because of the little, little, little details. And I think, again, for you beginners, you miss that because you just see lifts and you see heavy weights and you go, oh, that's really cool. It's not about that. It really is. Walk 
So we did one tricep exercise. Now we're going on to biceps. I have no idea what this workout is going to include in total. I'm just following along. Sometimes it's better not to know what you're going to do. You, know, you just end up doing it. So. Get that big dog. That's not Photoshop. No, that's real. That's, that's a real, real vein. It's real vein. Why are you crowding me, dog? That's what I do. When you're spotting your partner, take the hips in the appropriate angle or hand on back, keeping them forward. Oh, it's harder to curl that way. <laughs> <laughs> we just figured out something. That's called the booty pop curl. You stitch your booty back when you curl. Don't swing your back, Clark. Why, why do we swing our backs? Because I want to. That's a good enough reason for me. Because I want to. So notice the difference here, elbows out. So this is a little different angle, right? So anytime you change the angle, you change the exercise. You need to get around different people when you're training. You need to get in different environments, environments when you're training because if you're around the same people in the same environment, you're gonna get the same results. The guys at 20 hour, 24 hour fitness are crunch. Right. The guy doing 315 squat, yeah. that's the big dog. Right. And so everybody's going to be here going chasing him. Yeah. Because that's what they're going to think. Yeah. I watched Doug Furness and Doyle Kennedy's, who I grew up with. Yeah. So the first guys to do a thousand squat, um, uh, 900 deadlift, Jeffrey Bruder. That's who coached me at nine, right. nine years old on. So my ceiling was what? Freaking. Thinking. I, I missed one. At that age, too, it was like, I was like, it was like uh, the bunny rabbit, uh, Santa Claus is real, and, and lifting a thousand is real. It's belief, man. That right? set me up to win, where it's the ceiling of the person that's leading your group. You're always gonna come short of that guy. Yeah. And so keep moving up, keep moving up, keep moving up. But what Mike said is really important right now. It's the belief, because he witnessed men on a regular basis lifting a thousand pounds when in any gym in america you'll never find that so the limitations that we set the ceiling the beliefs or whatever vernacular you want to put to it is all that you can get so by me driving two hours to be here to train with beasts that are way stronger than me and i'm okay with that women even and that's fine i am now able to break through some of the beliefs that i had Oh, at 58, like this is the extent of what I can accomplish. That's not true. And I tend to believe a lower version of myself when I don't break out of the normal habits that I have every single day. So me driving two hours one way is it's worth it for me to come and do this. <laughs> Get this. Come on. Nice. Go. Go. Ah. Come on, you fake natty. How much trend did you do this morning? Enough. Enough. To look better than you. Okay, so this needs to be talked about because if we didn't talk about it, people are going to be commenting below. This whole idea of trend and people not believing that, at least for me, right? Like, I, I'll, I'm a ride and die with Mike. Like, I, until I see a needle hanging out of his ass, to me, he's natural because I've had discussions with this man in moments of time when he was very vulnerable and honest with me about everything. So, with that being said, let's talk about me. 100% drug free. I don't need any hormones. No TRT, no PED, no LED, no CCD. None of that. I am 100% 
absolutely clean. If you have any sort of disbelief in that, that's on you because you can't understand the capacity of the human body, specifically with somebody who works hard and has genetic potential with the epigenetic habits, right? Lifestyle habits that have led me to this point at 58 years old. I'm five feet eight, 185 pounds, 11% body fat. And I'm not a large human. I'm just a regular sized guy in clothes. So I know people are still going, fuck you, whatever. Fuck you. So it's, it's, it's unfortunate that people have a limiting belief about what is possible with the human body. I want you to look for the signs right back here. All the acne, like let me pop this is it and that's it. All the acne and all the stuff that typically follows someone who does drugs, it's there. It's all there. Question. If you had one bicep exercise that you had to do, couldn't do any other one on a desert island, what would it be? Straight bar curls. Straight bar curls. Why? Uh, because it also makes sure that there's nothing else legging. There's no impingements in the shoulders, elbows are still healthy, wrists are still strong. Um, and then it's the most compound kind of badass exercise you can do for biceps. Fair enough. I think it's my elbow squeaking, not the machine, just so you know. <laughs> Come on, boys. As they say in prison, get your money, dog. Get your money. Come on. It's an arm workout today. You already know the exercise you're going to train that day, how many sets you're going to do, failure sets, working sets, warm up sets. You know what I'm saying? So I make plans and then I'll alter them. I make the very best plan for the majority, and then I detail it for the individual. And uh, it's surprising that they look at me and they go, oh, but you only like heavy weights, low reps. Nobody does 315 squats like I do. Nope. That's 50s, one set. Good conversation here, man. So this is like the barbershop conversation, you know? When you're in there and they're talking about all the people. Same thing happens in the gym, man. And I, learned that I think that is my takeaway from this. It's like the art and the classicness and the old school mentality of the bodybuilding era, the golden era, it's kind of gone. And that's what I love about being around these guys is it brings it back. Like listening to this kind of stuff, super cool. It's a lot of fun.